Hey all, in this tutorial we're going to be talking about PPI sizes in digital scrapbooking. Back when I first started digital scrapbooking in 2005, the debate seemed to be huge whether to use 200 PPI or 300 PPI. Um, and it was important back then to understand the differences between the two and that was why I wrote this tutorial so long ago. Um, here it is 2011 and basically this debate has kind of smoothed itself out and most people are sticking with the 300 PPI. That still doesn't mean that 200 PPI is not wrong. But what this tutorial is going to do for you is just to help you understand and grasp PPI just a little bit more because this knowledge is important for all digital scrapbookers. PPI stands for pixels per inch and that was originally associated with screen viewing. So it's how many pixels you see per inch on your screen, on your laptop, on your computer screen, whatever screen, um, even the newer TVs will refer to it. So this knowledge can be helpful for um, many purposes. Pixels are those little bitty dots um, that if you zoom really far in on a document or on a photo um, or on your layout you can see those little squares and each one is a pixel and pixels per inch is how many of those little dots you're going to get into one inch. In general, 72 PPI is adequate for screen viewing and for web pages, but it's not adequate for printing. And with our digital scrapbooking, most of us want our pages to look good when printed. Now, just to confuse you more, DPI was originally associated with printing. It stands for dots per inch. You will remember if you are older like I am when the printers first come out, uh, began coming out a DPI, you, you heard the dot matrix printers and that that was how many dots per inch it printed. Um, the default settings for most printers nowadays are sufficient and when people go out shopping for printers they don't even think about DPI anymore um, because it's for the most part uh, for everyday use sufficient so it gets really confusing when you know especially like in camera uh, books um, they will use the term DPI instead of PPI um, often in the camera specs they use that instead of PPI but more and more these terms are just used interchangeably and so don't fret too much about it when you read one or the other uh, sometimes people are just confused between the two and don't use it correctly um, sometimes they're just they're just plain old interchangeable so how to determine the PPI of a file well I am in Windows seven right now and I do have a folder open up and I have one photo in it. Now you can hover over it and see the dimensions and the size of the file but you're going to want um, more than just the dimensions. The dimensions are important so right click and you can't really see it but I'm scrolling down it's right here at the very bottom choose properties now if you are in um, Vista you're going to be looking for a summary tab but here in uh, Windows 7 and I'm not sure what Mac is they I'm sure have very similar settings but in Vista and in Windows 7 you're going to look for the details tab just click around until you find um, your image information 
and here you're going to see that my image is a 72 DPI. Well, we're going to think it interchangeably with PPI. Um, as I said, often you see the DPI and it, instead of the PPI, and it can be very confusing. But you're also going to see the dimensions. You're going to see a width and a height. Sometimes you're just going to see the dimension field depending on your computer. Sometimes you're going to see the width and the height field. As you notice, the width here and the height here are the same. So basically we're looking for the resolution and the dimensions. And that's some of what we're going to be working with today. File size or the size you print at is also a factor. If we go back to our tutorial, we have this comparison chart. And I, I love this comparison chart. I think it, it's great for helping others understand. Um, but I'm going to actually create these in Photoshop elements so that you can see this uh, firsthand rather than just on the chart and then you can refer back to the chart. So I have four documents that I've created here. The first one is 12 by 12 at 300 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and make that. File, new, blank, 12 by 12 at 300 pixels. And I'm going to create that document and for our purposes I'm going to go ahead and just fill that with blue and save as um, what did we do 12 by 12 at 300 and I'm just going to save it as a JPEG file and click OK let that save going into not responding. I got too many things open. My recording software often does that to me. The next one was created in 12 by 12 at 200 pixels. So let's go ahead and do that. A new document and I'm just going to change the resolution to 200 and fill that and I'm going to save it as uh, 12 by 12 at 200. Now the next one on my chart is an 8 by 8 at 300. So 8 by 8 at 300. And then the last one, whoops, where'd it go? Is 8 by 8 at 200. So we have created these uh, four file types and there they are in my folder. Now we're going to, according to this chart, we're going to check the properties and um, see what they are. The first one is 12 by 12 at 300. So if I find that file and go to the properties and the details view, you're going to see that a 12 by 12 document, now you're not seeing the, the inches on this list right here, but a 12 by 12, that's the, the inches is the third factor that's going to be important if you really get into the math of all of this. But a, since we're using that as a standard 12 by, uh, then, well, some of them are 8 by 8, but that's the third factor. 
and anyway you're going to see that it's a 300 DPI we used PPI when we opened it up so you see how the terms are being used interchangeably but you're going to see the width and the height or the dimension is 3600 pixels now the next one we created was a 12 by 12 and you're going to see that the dimensions are 2400 by 2400 just a little bit smaller and the next one we created was the 8 by 8 at 300 and you're going to see that it is also 24 by 24 pixels so these two have the same dimensions only this one is 8 by 8 at 300 and this one's 12 by 12 at 200 and then the last one is only 1600 by 1600 at the 200 DPI or PPI now to continue you see um, really I have noted here the 3600 pixel is the best the 2400 not pixel dimension the the 2400 dimension is also acceptable but if you get down into the 1600 dimension it's generally unacceptable too small for your print size so um, as we continue on in our tutorial what I've done here in this graph is to take op take each of these files and open them up into a 12 by 12 document so we're going to go ahead and do that I'm going to do a file new blank file and we're going to make it the traditional scrapbooking paper of 12 by 12 and 300 now let me see make this smaller so I can drag these in easily so we're going to drag the 12 by 12 by 300 into our document and naturally uh, you probably anticipated it's going to be the same size as the document we created it fills up all the edges because it is the same size but if we take the 12 by 12 notice it's the same inches only it is um, 200 pixels per inch and we're going to take this same inches only 200 pixels per inch and drag it into this file you're going to see that it is much smaller it's a much smaller file size in total even though it says the same inches um, this is what's going to happen when you are creating a 300 pixel layout and you use a 200 pixel element or paper you're going to bring it in and you're going to go why is it so small if you've not noted before you began to use it that it was only a 200 pixel that you had purchased or gotten as a freebie then it may surprise you or freak you out um, the same thing would be if uh, let's say you had created this this is what happens more often for those that aren't um, observing they might uh, not realize that their default in Photoshop elements is set on 72 pixels per inch I think this has happened quite a bit and so they'll create this document and then they will go and get their standard industry size paper and they'll drag this 12 by 12 and 300 pixel into a 12 by 12 at 72 pixel and if it's an element they'll only see part of the element because the rest of it is way out here and so um, you, if you're bringing 
a standard one into a document you've made accidentally, it uh, will be really, really large. And that's a big key to the fact that you've probably created your layout too small of a size. So we have here 12 by 12 by 300 in here. And so now let's go get the 8 by 8. Now this is 12 by 12, 200. So if we get the 8 by 8, 300, and drag it in here, you're going to see when we pop it in here, it's the exact same size. So this one was 12 by 12 at 200 pixels, and this one is um, 8 by 8 at 300 pixels. And so you can see those two are actually the exact same size. I really think that that's going to help you understand the concept just a little bit more. And now if you bring in this 8 by 8 at 200 pixels, fewer pixels, you're going to see how small it really is. It is really small in comparison to these. So these sizes sometimes you're okay. But if you get down in here and you have um, maybe a tagger size or something that you've downloaded that's much smaller and let's say it's 8 by 8 and 200, it's really going to be too small of a quality for your layout. Because if this is a paper that I've I'm bringing in to my 12 by 12 document and I have to resize it up this much for it to fit those uh, those it's going to have to make up what it thinks all those pixels are supposed to be and its quality is not going to be as good so if we go back to our tutorial you'll understand this graphic a little bit better. You may have to come in here and really read. I've put the sizes in blue to help you understand. So, um, the reason that most of the designers stick with um, the 300 PPI as this industry standard is that designers um, tend to make their elements to a realistic size. And so if all of your kits are the same and you're pulling them in and working with them, um, regardless of whether you're working in a smaller rectangle or a smaller 8x8, eight eight, the you're going to be familiar with the sizes. Um, if you're working in a 12 by 12 300 pixel, then you're going to be able to just plop all these things on the page. Uh, for me, when I'm working with them in a rectangular size, which is smaller uh, than the 12 by 12, um, I'm going to know that I'm going to resize each one of them down just a little bit and it becomes habit and I really don't think about it too much. Um, so it, it's it's great to have everything the same size. Um, cameras often take photos in 72 DPI. Well, this is why I've stuck this photo in here. Let's look at those properties of that photo again. You'll remember that it's a 3888 by 2592. Let's see if we can bring this chart back up and put the proper, well, let's move the chart over and put these properties right next to it so we can see. You see I said over here 12 by 12 at 300 pixels equals a dimension of 3600 by 3600. Well, if you look over here, this 38888 is already a larger dimension than this 12 by 12. And this 2592 is still above this 2400. 
even though it says 72 dpi. So often the dimensions are going to tell you more whether or not the quality of the image is acceptable or not. Now the math that goes into this includes the three figures and you know normally I hate math. <laughs> I don't like to think math. I'm just not a math person. I would have to really think hard and long. So rather than thinking long and hard, <laughs> what I'm going to do is just drag my photo into this document, just as I did all those other papers, and see how much of it, ta it takes up. You're going to see that my photo straight out of the camera is larger this way and it's, all, it's, it's really large this way, so it's definitely going to print well in at least a 12 by 12. Um, even since it goes over, it might even print uh, slightly larger than that really well. And actually, if I wanted to consider um, printing it at the 200 dpi rather than the 300 dpi, I could open up that document at, and uh, compare to see how it would print. So that's an easy way to see how large your photos are coming out of your camera. You know though when I put this on my digital scrapbooking page I'm going to do this because I want to put everything else around on my page and with everything else on my page it's still going to look good for this area in that amount of the photo. So I'm going to be doing a little bit more advanced tutorial for the upcoming photography class and um, that's going to cover a little bit more of the math for those that want to get into the math and um, what all those figures mean. But um, for the general person opening it up and seeing 72 dpi don't freak out as long as the dimension numbers are high enough and go ahead and just test them in a document as I just did if that makes you feel more comfortable on the sizing. Um, you can read a little bit more about the uh, controversy of 300 versus 200 ppi here in the tutorial. Um, there are reasons why 200 ppi might be better. The biggest one is it's a smaller file size. Um, if you hover over this 12 by 12 you can see it's 849 kb and if you hover over this one it's 382 kb. So that means less file space on your computer. Um, but as I explained in here, for me the choice to go with the industry standard is because in the future technology is going to keep getting bigger and better and I don't want to regret it in the future um, having that 200 ppi when I could have had 300 and it worked better with future technology. That is kind of my reasoning. I think that it probably does fit print perfectly fine at the 200 ppi and if that's your choice and you want to create in that, go for it. There's no right or wrong answer. Sometimes these things are more of a personal choice. So um, uh, lower RAM is another reason f to um, do the 200 ppi. If you have low RAM and um, you're running let's say a filter on your on your photo or your layout, something with a 200 ppi isn't going to bog down your computer as much as a 300 ppi. So there are reasons um, that you might want to go with that. And so I hope this has helped you to better understand a little bit about PPI and how it works. As I said, I'm going to be doing some other tutorials. Uh, this would be enough for your basic scrapbooker to understand <laughs> and uh, why it's important when you're using different sizes of elements and what you need to download out there. Catch you around the forum. <laughs>